Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, how do you do? This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and give him praise. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Daily Devotions with Miss Anna. I am Miss Anna, and today we are going to be reading from Ephesians chapter 5 in its entirety. <clears throat> Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children, and walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. <clears throat> but sexual immorality and impurity or greed should not even be heard of among you, as is proper for saints. Obscene and foolish talking or crude joking are not suitable, but rather giving thanks. For know and recognize this, Every sexually immoral or impure or greedy person who is an idolater does not have an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments, for God's wrath is coming on the disobedient because of these things. Therefore, do not become their partners, for you were once darkness. But now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Testing what is pleasing to the Lord. Don't participate in the fruitless works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what is done by them in secret. Everything exposed by the light is made visible. For what makes everything visible is light. Therefore it is said, get up, sleeper, and rise up from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Pay careful attention, then, to how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless living. But be filled by the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ submitting to one another in the fear of Christ. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, because the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of the body. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives are to submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her to make her holy, cleansing her with the washing of water by the word. He did this to present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or anything like that, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands are to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hates his own flesh, but provides and cares for it, just as Christ does for the church. Since we are members of his body, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This mystery is profound, but I am talking about Christ and the church. To sum up, each one of you is to love his wife as himself, and the wife is to respect her husband. Now I've, reading, I've 
reading. <laughs> what kind of word is that? I've read. <laughs> I have read Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 33. That's the entire chapter. But today we are going to focus on verses 1 and 2, which reads, Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children, and walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us, a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. So we're talking about being imitators of God today and walking in love. And you know what I found when I read this chapter? I found that if you do verses one and two, it takes care of all these other verses just by being obedient to verse 1 and 2, by imitating God and walking in love. To imitate God, you would have to know God. You would have to spend time with God because you can't imitate somebody that you don't know, that you, you don't spend time with. It's just like children and their parents. They imitate their parents. They imitate their parents because they want to be like their parents, because they love their parents. And they they begin to imitate them probably, I don't know, maybe around three, maybe around three. But the, the point is that they imitate them and they begin to talk like them. They begin to show characteristics of them and their walking and behavior and that comes from spending time with their parents. So the only way that we are going to imitate God is to spend time with him, to know his word, to read his word, to pray. Um, one thing that I can tell you about God is that God is love. And so to walk in love is and, and is to be like God and to imitate God as he is love. And so one of the things we are going to look at today is, I think we will look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. To give you an idea of what love is. So a lot of people think they love but it's not love. A lot of people think love is a feeling. But I'm here to tell you that love is a choice. And that may not be a popular thing to say, but it's the truth. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, um, I'm going to read verse 1 through 8. And I'm starting with verse 1 now. If I speak human or angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so that I can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give away all my possessions, and if I give over my body in order to boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Here's what love is. Love is patient. And you can separate, you know, where I say love, you can put God in there and you'll see his character. This is how we should be. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy, is not boastful, is not arrogant, is not rude, is not self-seeking, is not irritable, and does not keep a record of wrongs. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. 
love never ends. That's what love is. And we are to imitate God and we are to walk in this. Again, this was 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. This is how we are to act. This is how we are to respond. This is how our behavior should look. That's walking in love. And that is a choice. When things get tough, when we're presented with people with bad attitudes that are unkind to us, we have to choose to walk in love. That looks like somebody maybe cussing you out or saying some things that they shouldn't say to you. And rather than you acting in impulse or um, reacting to what they say, I used to be a big reactor, reacting to what someone said or to something someone did. It means that we should pause, slow down, and not react. Listen for the voice of God and respond the way he would. Because clearly that person, there's something wrong. And you don't have to take it onto yourself. What is wrong with that person? That person is having an issue. That person is having a problem. That is their issue. That is their problem. It does not belong to you until you pick it up and respond in a wrong manner. Now both of you are wrong. Whereas you could have ministered in that situation and responded in love. But love takes care of a lot of these issues. Let me look back again at 1 Corinthians 13. It talks about, you know, one of the things is talking about being sexually immoral. <clears throat> and it actually said that that's idolatry. My pencil has moved from my, my paper, um, from my Bible. It was holding my spot, but I found it. Um, so one of the things that love is not is self-seeking, right? And so self-seeking and sexual immorality go hand in hand because you're seeking to fulfill your flesh when you operate, when you uh, are sexually immoral. It's all about you. You are your God. You are listening to your flesh. And that is idolatry. So if you're walking in love, you're not self-seeking. See how this takes care of all these things? Uh, it talked about submitting. Wives submitting and husbands loving their wives. If you are walking in love, and you are patient and you are kind and you are not envious and boastful and arrogant and rude. If you're not those things, all of this takes care of itself. That takes care of some arguments that husbands and wives have. Not keeping a record of wrongs. You know, not going in the past and digging up some stuff and you're in... You're not even in the past, you, but you went all the way in the past and drudged something up that bothered you from yesteryear that has nothing to do with today. That's not walking in love. So we want to make sure that we walk in love. That's all we want to do. We want to imitate God. We want to walk in love. So I encourage you today to read and spend time with God, experiencing his love, knowing how to treat people because you're imitating him.
He is love. God is love and God loves you. And if you've never experienced his love, if you've never encountered him or had a relationship with him, I encourage you today to reach out to him through prayer. Seek his face. That's kind of Christianese. I shouldn't say it that way. Pray to God. Talk to him. That's what prayer is. Talking to God. Inviting him in your heart. With a genuine and sincere heart, tell him that you need him in your life. To make changes like what I'm talking about, you cannot do on your own. You must have the spirit of God living on the inside of you to do these things. To walk in love, you must have a relationship with God. Because then he speaks to you and you can choose to obey him. And I recommend and suggest that you do. Obey God in everything. He loves you. He loves you so much. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And you know what's interesting? Romans 5, 8 talks about how we were yet sinners and Christ died for us. That's interesting because we were enemies of God. And he died for us. He took on our sins, our wrongdoings. He did that while we were his enemy. You know what I mean? Like I'm the whole thing we're talking about today is love. That's how much he loved us. Who dies for their enemies? A just person? Maybe, perhaps. But for your enemy, that's how much he loved us. We were enemies of God. But he loved us. He wanted a relationship with us. And so he sent his son. And now we can choose to love God in return and accept Jesus and what he did as our Lord and Savior. So when we accept Jesus, we say, I'm no, I'm no longer living for myself. I don't want that kind of life. I don't want to live how I've been living. I want to live for you, Lord. I want you to be my Lord. I want you to tell me what to do. I know that your life is the best life. And that's what I want. I want the best life. I want to serve you. I want to obey you. I want you. I desire you above all else. That's what we're saying when we give our life to Christ. We're saying, I'm going to obey you in what you say. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. And I'm going to live how you tell me to live. So today, if you decide to give your life to Christ and invite him into your heart, reach out to me and let me know. You can reach me in the comments below. We've been having some issues with that. I haven't been able to read them. I've, I've heard that I've had some comments, but I, I have not received them. But I do have an email address that you can also correspond with me. Um, it's Daily Devotions with Ms. Dot Anna at gmail.com. Make sure you put that little dot in there for Ms. You know, Ms. Ms. Anna. So Daily Devotions with Miss Anna, Ms. Dot Anna at gmail.com. I hope that you all have had um, enjoyed this time together and I look forward to seeing and speaking with you again soon. God bless you. God loves you. You have to remember that God loves you. He really does.